Welcome back to another AI Practitioner Exam Bite. Reviewing the question from the previous episode asking which statement best describes how AWS Generative AI Services could address these requirements? The correct answer is D. The organization could leverage AWS's pre-built AI capabilities, global infrastructure, and compliance features to quickly develop and securely deploy their tool across multiple regions. This answer aligns with the key advantages of AWS Generative AI services discussed in that episode, including accessibility, lower barriers to entry, speed to market, and built-in security and compliance features. Okay, today we're moving into our next domain titled Applications of Foundation Models. And we're starting off with Task Description 3.1, which is Describe Design Considerations for Applications that Use Foundation Models. And within that first exam objective, identify selection criteria to choose pre-trained models. For example, cost, modality, latency, multilingual, model size, model complexity, customization, and input output length. When choosing a pre-trained model for your AI projects, consider some key factors. The first being cost, because budget matters. Some models like Llama 3.1 are open source. Others like Claude are commercial models and can incur cost. Always factor in both training and inference costs. For example, Claude models from Anthropic might have different pricing than Titan models from Amazon. Don't also forget costs if you intend to fine tune the model. Next is modality. What type of data are you working with? For text, you might choose Cohere Command or Claude. For images, consider Stability AI's Stable Diffusion. There are also multimodal models which can support both text and images, such as Anthropic's Claude. Latency. How fast do you need responses? Because different models have different response times. Multilingual support. If your project involves multiple languages, you should choose a model which has multilingual support. For example, if you need an embeddings model, then Cohere Embed has both an English model and a multilingual model. Model size. Larger models with larger numbers of parameters often perform better, but require more resources, whereas smaller models are more manageable, but may sacrifice some performance, so it's a trade-off. Model complexity. More complex models offer great results, but can be challenging to fine tune. Simpler models might be easier to work with for beginners. Customization options. How much do you need to tailor the model? Some models are designed for particular types of customization, such as the Flan T5 model, which is optimized for few shot prompting, which we'll talk about a bit later in this course. Other models are also optimized for things like fine tuning. And finally, input output length. Consider the length of your input data and required output. Different models have limitations on the length of the input and output tokens, although most modern models have very generous token limits, such as Claude 3 with a 200,000 token limit. Now remember, there's no one size fits all best solution. The best choice depends on your specific use case and requirements. Let's do a review question to finish off. A startup is developing a real-time language translation app using Amazon Bedrock. The app needs to quickly translate short phrases between multiple languages and occasionally generate images based on text descriptions. Which combination of models and criteria should they prioritize? A. Titan text for both translation and image generation. Prioritize input-output length and model complexity. B. Titan text for translation and stable diffusion for image generation. Prioritize multilingual support and customization options. C, Titan embedding model for translation and Titan text for image generation. Prioritize model size and multimodal capabilities. Or D, Titan text models for translation and stable diffusion for image generation. Prioritize latency and modality specific performance. Post your answer into the comments and we'll review the answer in the next episode where we're diving into the effect of inference parameters on model responses. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to follow, like, or subscribe. See you in the next one.